Hello again. Thanks for joining me for another edition of Electric Avenue's YouTube updates. Uh, we're doing the new releases today for uh, March 29th, 2024. Uh, we are. I am. Uh, <laughs> it is uh, Easter weekend around here, so um, there's a lot of people on vacation. It is sort of a, a downtime, a lot of spring breakers. And uh, this is a sort of a smaller new release week a little bit. Um, next week is a huge week and uh, we're getting sort of geared up for Record Store Day uh, on April 20th. I know some of my things are already shipping en route, so get excited. <laughs> Set your alarm clocks for uh, super early on the 20th. <clears throat> you might not want to go to sleep on the 19th, I don't know, but all right, so uh, to get started, um, I think, you know, I usually start with the biggest thing first as far as like size and, or so this week, uh, big release is the Def, uh, Def Leppard, Deep Purple <laughs> Machine Head, and this is a five disc deluxe anniversary, of anniversary edition, can't speak this morning. Uh, this does feature, it's really four discs and the record. Uh, the, there's a vinyl record here that's like a purple swirly color. Uh, purple smoke vinyl, um, three CDs and a Blu-ray. Uh, so the CDs feature um, a, the 2024 remix, uh, the concert from 72, uh, and a concert from 71, a Montreux. And then a Blu-ray is the Atmos remix, uh, the 74 US quad mix, and 5.1 mixes. Uh, and the Blu-ray audio features new Atmos remix by Dweezil Zappa. So Dweezil had some uh, say in what happened here. Um, and it's fairly reasonably priced too compared to some other sets, although fewer discs. Um, I guess uh, one thing I should mention, so I mean that is kind of probably the big release of the week's uh, as far as multiple uh, things in a set. Uh, the Beyonce record was supposed to be re uh, released on the 29th. I think it's still, it's probably streaming that day and I think they're still taking pre-orders. I don't know if it's shipping that day. We're still waiting to hear from our distributor as to what's going on with the physical version of uh, Carter Country or whatever it's called. So. So you won't be seeing uh, Beyonce in the video. I guess I should have said that at the beginning. All right, um, next thing, <clears throat> uh, Clutch. And this is a reissue of Transnational Speedway League, Anthems, Anecdotes, and Undeniable Truths. This is remastered audio, limited edition, 180 gram colored vinyl, and an artist autograph numbered insert. Uh, these are not cheap. They have altered artwork. Um, I know a lot of people have been waiting for this record for a long time. Unfortunately, it's, you know, pushing in the $60 range, uh, for, I think a single record too, but, uh, clutch fans, they're going to want that. Okay. <clears throat> jazz things, uh, part of the OJC original jazz classic series, Ron Carter, and this is with Eric Dolphy and Mal Waldron, originally uh, Prestige, or uh, is a Prestige title. Um, this is uh, Where is the name of the album. And again, it was uh, Lacquer's Cut from the Original Master Tapes by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio, pressed at RTI. This whole series has been lauded as like the best sounding reissue series. I think even some people think even superior to the Blue Note Tone Poets, which I don't really understand since Kevin Gray really did both, or at least equal to that. Um, <clears throat> the packaging, they use these sort of like uh, jackets that are a little taller, thick, and they have kind of nice textured covers a lot of the time. Uh, whereas the Tone Poets are more gatefold and they come in sort of special bags. Sort of similar to this. This is uh, this week's Acoustic Sounds 
Verve Acoustics, and these are also very highly regarded. Uh, Ella Fitzgerald and her album Clap Hands, Here Comes Charlie. Uh, so that's uh, Audiophile QRP Repressing Tip-On Gatefold Sleeve Mastered from the original analog tapes by Top Mastering Engineers. Uh, I believe there's... Um, yeah, this is the Verve Acoustic Sounds. This features Night in Tunisia, You're My Thrill, Stella by Starlight, Cry Me a River. Uh, so some classic Ella there. I always thought this was kind of a quirky cover considering this is an Ella Fitzgerald album. It's like you would think that they would put Ella Fitzgerald on the cover. This was 1961, a cover, Tête d'une femme, 1948 by Jean de, de Buffet. Jean de Buffet. My French is terrible, so don't judge me on that. I studied German for eight years, so what do I know about French? Uh, although I do love French music. Not not pop French so much. Well, Daft Punk, yes. Justice, Justice, yes. Um, I don't know. <laughs> That's sort of a loaded statement, really. I'm a huge Debussy Ravel fan, so. All right, uh, Johnny Lytle. And this is the Jazz Dispensary release of the week. People and Love. And Johnny Lytle was a vibraphonist, or is a vibraphonist. Uh, Down-tempo funk extravaganza from the vibraphone maestro. Uh, Crate Digger's Treasure Chest. Uh, oh, available for the first time in 50 years. Lacquer's cut from the original master tapes by Kevin Gray at Coherent Audio. Pressed at RTI. The greatest vibes player in the world, says Lionel Hampton. Um, so, and uh, yeah. Same, same pressing situation that uh, the OJC uh, that I showed you, um, Ron Carter, went through. All right, a couple of um, third man pressings on the Verve by Request series. Uh, we've got the Eddie Fisher Quintet, The Third Cup. And this is a 180 gram audiophile. Uh, what year was this done? I don't know. Looks like maybe late 60s, eh, early, yeah, probably late 60s, possibly early 70s. But um, originally on Cadet, I think this record is not. It's not terribly hard to find, but I think it it's not easy. Uh, 1969. So there's that. Uh, if you like jazz guitar. This is kind of interesting. Uh, Tony Scott on clarinet, music for Zen meditation, uh, features Koto also and Shakuhachi. So if you want to get super Zen and chill out and go kind of Tibetan and uh, have very like haunting sort of quiet calming experience, this might be for you. This one is actually a gatefold. Uh, whereas the Eddie Fisher was not. Uh, new records. we got to have something new, right? New Ride album this week. Uh, British shoegaze band, limited double vinyl, Interplay. Includes the album down download. Uh, track listing there. Uh, they have a song called Portland Rocks. I'm assuming that it's more about the rocks in Portland and not that Portland rocks, but maybe, I don't know. Uh, Ride, uh, you know, their album Nowhere was such a breakthrough in the 90s in the sort of shoegaze sound. If you're into slow dive and um, even Stereo Lab and people like that, you might want to check that out. Um, a new Secret Sisters album. And this one is called Mind man medicine and this is actually a, an autographed cover they did 1500 of these uh, secret sisters are on new west they're americana this features ray la montaigne uh among uh their own great music secret sisters are awesome another pretty cool americana artist sarah shook and uh the disarmers this is her new record revelations and this is a Tiger's Eye vinyl. And it says, Brimming with musical prowess and infectious melodies. Uh, 
says Glide Magazine. We've had a lot of really great uh, singer-songwriters release records in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the new albums from Waxahachie, uh, Katie Crutchfield, and... Uh, the other one. Oh, Adrienne Lenker. Those are both really, really great albums. Played them a lot in store. Uh, just, there's so much talent out there. Sierra Farrell has been selling quite well. And then people like Nora Jones still selling well. Even Casey Musgraves, um, which is more, well, those are a little more mainstream. But uh, yeah, there's so much great stuff coming out. Some 41. What is purported to be their last album, Heaven and Hell, uh, the Heaven side being the more emo kind of pop rock side and the Hell being a little more metal-ish uh, is the way they sort of split that up. But uh, And then the, this is also on red and black quad with blue splatter vinyl. So um, don't know how long those will be sticking around couple other sort of of that era uh, mxpx and their new record panic this is limited edition color vinyl from side one dummy um, you know, sort of like punk rocky kind of stuff also um, from sort of that era newfound glory and their new record uh, this is nfg it's on green vinyl produced by newfound glory i mean some of these artists you're like good for them that they're still making records aaron lewis uh the hill um all right and this is he's gone sort of americana coke bottle clear vinyl uh of course i have to tell you that some of the songs are explicit i can only imagine what made in china is about um all right and then gentle giant New Gentle Giant record, a reissue, The Missing Piece. This is a Stephen Wilson remix, 2024. Uh, and this is sort of one of their probably like lesser known, like towards kind of, uh, it came out a little bit later, I think, uh, if I remember correct. Although, you know, they have a picture of the cover of, uh, was it the first Gentle Giant on the back with The Missing Piece. Uh, this is uh, recorded in, uh, Holland, London, oh, what else does this say? Just limited edition green vinyl. I've heard some Gentle Giant. I haven't really gone deep into their catalog. You know, it's sort of like you do King Crimson and then you start fanning out from there. So uh, I'll get to it one day. Uh, let's see, reissue of Bob Marley's Trenchtown Rock. This is on a, kind of a yellow vinyl. And this is done by the uh, Culture Factory, I think, did this. Yeah. New artwork. Uh, so if you had Trench Now Rock, this might not look familiar to you, but this features Sun is Shining, African Herbsman, Kaya, Trench Town Rock, Lively Up Yourself. Uh, so a lot of songs that, you know, maybe aren't top known songs but but definitely well-known songs uh so that's cool another reggae release this week uh gregory isaac's no luck this is a reissue also this is on translucent orange vinyl uh one pressing worldwide featuring is fe also features brand new artwork I'm not sure what the artwork is except maybe in some cases, they probably can't find the original artwork. I'm sure that, you know, the, that's always talked about as an issue. Uh, but there's a song here called All the Store Are Closed. Uh, what Will Your Mama Say? Um, don't Believe in Him. We Don't Pet Sound Boys. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, but this is uh, what... 19 uh, 2000 oh, this came out in 2001 it looks like so it's a kind of a later gregory isaacs album but it was on charlie records uh, or at least that's where it's been licensed from uh and just to mention a couple of things that uh, i didn't have when they came out originally and i want to sort of highlight them kim gordon's new album the collective so if you're a sonic youth fan you should probably check this out this is very cool it's sort of like 
electronic trap like grunge sort of punk record with a 70 year old woman kind of kind of just sort of like I wouldn't call it rapping sort of like giving sort of uh, observational talking sort of stuff uh, so if you like Sonic Youth look that up Faye Webster this came out uh, came in a little bit late too Underdressed at the Symphony this is her new record uh, she's done a bunch of stuff for uh, abortion rights recently and uh, yeah might want to check that out and then a couple of reissues actually there were three but I think I've already sold one uh, but from um, uh, Wax Tracks uh, there's My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult I See Good Spirits I See Bad Spirits and Sexplosion which features uh, Sex on Wheels Sex on Wheels um, these records are kind of harder to find um, yeah uh, let's see this one also has uh, the International Sin set they're, they were kind of are kind of or were kind of a fun uh, alternative electro rock band uh, kind of in that sort of ministry school of but more campy than that probably all right um fun and then one other release uh new bananarama glorious this is a kind of a a new greatest hits set although it's really more of a collection of some of the more recent hits that they've had uh since 2000 and then there's a few older ones there's a bigger cd version of this i think it's like two discs two discs maybe 40 tracks something like that there might even be a larger one than that but this one features their two new singles uh supernova and feel the love which are actually both pretty great uh the only really old songs on here it starts with um you look this up online but cruel summer uh 3 a.m mix robert de niro's waiting venus the boys noise rework edit uh, Love in the First Degree and Preacher Man, Moving On. Uh, those are sort of like from the first era. And then the remaining 10 tracks are all from more recent albums. So, uh, you know, it's got a couple of songs from uh, Masquerade, which came out just a couple of years ago. So it's a little bit of like a, a greatest hits. Tying up some loose ends. Uh, I think the, the CD version... There's like a deluxe vinyl version of that, I think, that's like really expensive and has most of the tracks like their Christmas song. Uh, and then some CDs here, too. A new High Llamas uh, CD. I think this is also available on vinyl. Hey Panda is the name of it. Uh, High Llamas, Sean O'Hagan and company. Um, kind of great sort of dreamy, quirky indie pop. Uh, Chicano Batman their new CD, Notebook Fantasy. Um, had a friend who really loved them, and he just passed away recently, so that's sad. Norman Brown, his new album, It Hits Different. So sort of uh, smooth jazz kind of. Um, let's see. whole picture of Norman there. Uh, Nico, <clears throat> The Marble Index. This is a reissue of this record on CD. You don't see this on CD very often anymore. And uh, got a couple of bonus tracks, Roses in the Snow and Nibelungen. Uh, a Stereo Lab, a sort of a reissue, little pieces of Stereo Lab, a switched on sampler. Uh, so this has songs from a lot of different things. And Typo Negative, uh, their new CD reissue of Bloody Kisses, the 30th anniversary, including eight bonus tracks. Well, if that doesn't make some people feel old for me to say, Typo Negative is 30 years old. It's scary when you start seeing 40, 50, whatever, so 60 <laughs> um, Beatles fans. So I was like, I don't know really what to review this week that I, or recommend. I was kind of in like a limbo i've been so busy trying to get record store day stuff going and whatever and i thought you know i haven't really done much bowie and i actually did i think i've done one maybe 
so I thought, well, I'm going to recommend a classic Bowie. And uh, I think most people, you think of Bowie and the immediate two that come to mind are usually Hunky Dory and Ziggy Stardust. Uh, and so I kind of was like, well, I don't know if I want to recommend ones that everybody would say. And I know that this album gets sort of pegged as like Ziggy Stardust 2 or whatever, but it's really a great album in its own right. And that is uh, Aladdin Sane, David Bowie's Aladdin Sane, a 1973 album. Apparently at the time uh, when this cover shot was taken, it was the most expensive photo uh, album cover ever made because it went through some sort of color process where they had to use like seven different treatments or something. So, uh, but it has the iconic sort of lightning bolt picture on his face. Uh, he was about 25 years old when this was made. I think people kind of forget how young he was at this time. Uh, and he'd already had like the two albums and then, uh, well, really three because he had the two I mentioned, Man Who Sold the World. Then Space Oddity before that, which actually was a hit, had a hit song on it. And then before that, he was doing kind of like uh, more like British kind of humorous type music. And so he really got an early start. And so when we say, oh, he passed away, uh, gosh, it's been seven, eight years now, seven years Uh And he was, what, 69 at the time? I mean, he's really had a very extensive career. Uh, this is the Parlophone reissue that came out uh, f what, a few years ago. Um, and it, uh, I guess sort of people, the reason that they sort of see it as a little bit lesser is like the Ziggy concept was already fully formed. And I kind of say, well, you know, to me that feels more like he took what he learned from those previous albums and just solidified everything but he still was experimenting because he never was really quite settled in any one thing at any given time so uh this album was recorded uh conceptualized while he was on tour in america uh doing the ziggy tour and every song was kind of supposed to represent a different sort of take of Ziggy's experience watching things happen in America. So uh, Watch That Man, the first song, was supposedly kind of a New York type song and also inspired by the New York Dolls who he had recently seen uh, performing. And uh, the second song, Aladdin Sane, was a little bit more like uh, you're getting kind of a, a New Orleans type feel or Southern vibe there. Drive-In Saturday was sort of a, a song again um, like um, sort of a, a journey across uh, Seattle to Phoenix he was uh, like on a bus tour A Panic in Detroit was obviously Detroit inspired um, and then Cracked Actor was sort of LA inspired so uh, I think um, sort of all over the place I think Watch That Man was New York. Now I feel like I maybe misspoke. Time is the one that's very New Orleans inspired. That's right. So, um, but anyway, cities aside, uh, I think that this is a very like um, interesting record because it poses many different kind of feels and facades of Bowie's um, career. Songs like The Prettiest Star were re-record. That was a re-recording of an older song. Uh, which he kind of beefed it up, and it, it's actually quite good. Uh, Gene Genie, uh, one of his biggest singles, people kind of forget sometimes, I think, that it's on this album, and it's sort of kind of almost buried towards the end. Uh, his cover of Let's Spend the Night Together, The Rolling Stones, well, he was very influenced by The Rolling Stones on this album, and, uh, you know, it's a more like uh, glam rock sort of sped up version of the song. For a long time, I didn't really like it. And now I think it's actually pretty good. Um, but uh, that was sort of polarizing. I think time is a masterpiece. And I think if you you have to mention time and the title track, Aladdin Sane, and you cannot mention those without 
mentioning the piano talents of Mike Garson and uh, what he brought to the table with his sort of avant-garde recycling of blues, jazz, rock. I mean, it's, it's some of the most incredible piano playing that you'll hear on a rock record. And I think that, you know, this was sort of his uh, introduction in Bowie's band. So you didn't really have the same kind of that element on some of those earlier albums, like Ziggy Stardust, he wasn't there. Uh, this was also produced by Ken Scott, who did uh, the three albums of this area, this one, Ziggy and Hunky Dory. So you kind of know the sound that you're sort of getting. Uh, Watch That Man opened the album, and at the time uh, it was sort of criticized for the vocals being a little buried in the mix, but it's kind of like the sound that he was really going for. So once you kind of get over that, uh, it's worth sort of listening to. It's a great song. Uh, and then I said Aladdin Sane's a great song. Drive-In Saturday, great, great song. Glam rock, sort of kind of similar to his recording of All the Young Dudes that was done at this time also. He took that and farmed it out to uh, Mott the Hoople um, because he was producing their record and they needed hits and he's giving away some of his best songs, sort of like you know what Prince would do later. Uh, and also he was working with Lou Reed on Transformer at this time. So he was really tired, stretched thin, doing a lot of stuff, traveling across America and touring. And, um, but you know, endless energy at this point, um, which would eventually lead to some drug issues. But yeah, this was a uh, fantastic and drive in Saturday sort of reflected, um, kind of that dystopian America of the the West and the uh, nuclear silos and, and framing it in sort of a doo-wop kind of song. And one of his greatest songs, Panic in Detroit, uh, was inspired by his uh, discussion with uh, Iggy of the Stooges and Detroit Riots in 67. And uh, that's got kind of a more kind of upbeat... Um, sort of agitated type feel to it and cracked actor is just uh you know a kind of a very heavy glam rock kind of song um it's a lot of sexual innuendos with lyrics about like prostitution type stuff and uh things like that but time really is the centerpiece of this album i think uh what an incredible sort of kind of cabaret rock type song that is and um very complex arrangement, complex chords. And I think even when you see them play it live in the film, uh, the Ziggy film, uh, it's it's a great performance, but uh, the studio version is just, uh, I think, I don't know. For me, it's uh, unsurpassed. And I love the last track too, Lady Grinning Soul, which uh, is again, another sort of Rolling Stones type inspired song. And Mike Garson's keyboard playing again is just unbelievable uh, if you really listen to what's going on and uh, he'll do it again later uh, when Bowie does uh, Station to Station and he's on things like Wild as the Wind and whatever but uh, Lady Grinning Soul great great underrated song um, you know there's really not a bad song on this record but I can probably say that about all three high point albums of Bowie in this era. And uh, what a great iconic cover this is and uh, folds out inside to a really uh, cool picture too. So my recommend this week, I guess, is David Bowie's Aladdin Saint. I mean, you could do a lot worse. <laughs> and it's really like in the top records of Bowie that has to fall, at, if not in the top 10, at least the top five, or top five, at least the top 10 somewhere uh it's just incredible so and very inspirational i think uh it was sort of a breakthrough album for him uh, especially in uh, the u.s uh and it kind of because it brought in a lot of the sounds of the u.s and uh, in england those two singles uh drive in saturday and um uh gene genie were both top five hits uh, so it was a really big thing, and I think also a lot of people from my generation 
when they start talking about like their love of Bowie. Uh, this is the, one of the things that always comes up first. And I think because it had such the cover, the music had such an effect on their thoughts of what rock and roll was of this era and what it could be, what he represented and how great the music on this was. I mean, it, it also opened a lot of people to uh, like thinking of jazz being involved in rock and uh, and then Bowie would go even further with ambient music and stuff. So uh, what a what an icon and what an incredible artist he was. So, all right, uh, as we actually uh, are celebrating, this is the 51st. 51st year uh, since that came out, uh, which is hard to believe. Also hard to believe that this came out maybe, ooh, I think it was about 10 months after Ziggy. So uh, back then, artists were putting out two albums a year a lot of the time. Elton John is another one who uh, just had an incredible run of uh, incredible artistic records. And uh, so you got to put Bowie in that category. I would say Stevie Wonder. I mean, there's a few Pink Floyd. There's a few really great. And if you go back to the Beatles and the Stones, obviously. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. Uh, this is a little bit shorter video, but uh, I figured, well, I could probably do a whole like, you know, long thing on, on Aladdin Sane. But uh, I, I should probably leave that to somebody else who... <laughs> Uh, that's their job. So thanks, everyone. Have a great week. See you next time. Uh, next week is a big release week. Uh, we've got Vampire Weekend. Uh, there's what the two big ones, uh, three big ones. Vampire Weekend, uh, Black Keys, and Krung Ben, and also uh, Marcus King, uh, Phosphorescent. There's a lot of stuff coming out next week. Uh, I think they want to have that stuff in the store so that when actually Record Store Day happens, if people aren't getting it that day, they'll be able to get it uh, when they're here for that. So, all right. Take care. See you soon. Peace. Have a good weekend. Happy Easter if you do that. Uh, whatever you do, take a break and uh, get outside for five minutes. All right. I would love to do that. Peace.